The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome. This is Patrick Higgins from YSI. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on optical technology for conducting BODs and specifically information about the YSI Pro OBOD probe. We hope everyone finds the information very beneficial. I'd like to note that today's webinar is being recorded and we will make a copy available to everyone who registered and that will be sent to you in a couple days. Just in case you missed something, you want to share it with colleagues or simply want to review the material. At the end of the presentation, there should be a little bit of time for questions. You can simply ask a question by typing it into the field on your GoToWebinar window pane. There should be a question or a chat section, and uh, I can see both of those. If we don't get to your question during the webinar, we will definitely follow up afterwards. And for today's short presentation, we have one presenter. It's Laura St. Pierre. Laura is the assistant product manager here at YSI, and she's been with us for eight years. And now I'd like to turn it over to Laura. Thanks for the introduction, Patrick. Before we get started, I would like to mention that the YSI Optical Beauty Probe is released and currently available. As shown in this picture, the Optical Beauty Probe will work with a YSI Pro Audio instrument. It will not work with any other YSI instrument you may have. The OBOD probe has a stir motor that requires AC power. Therefore, it is designed to be used in a lab setting. However, the Pro, o the Pro Audio instrument is versatile in that it will also work with the rugged Audio field probe pictured here to the right. So you can have one instrument that will work in the lab and the field by simply switching probes. My slides just aren't advancing, so just give me one second. There we go. Um, here is an outline of today's presentation. First, I'm going to describe how the OBOD sensor measures dissolved oxygen. The OBOD sensor uses optical technology for measuring dissolved oxygen. Optical technology is also commonly referred to as luminescent technology. So if you see luminescent or optical describing a probe's technology, just know that they are describing the same methodology. I'll also describe the advantages of using optical technology for dissolved oxygen measurements over other technologies, such as the traditional membrane-covered sensor that you might be using. Then I'll discuss some unique features of the YSI OBOD sensor that will help make your BOD test run smoothly and reliably week after week. I'll also talk about the status of EPA's national approval of optical technology for dissolved oxygen measurements. At this point, I would like to mention that we have an excellent resource page on our website that has a ton of information about measuring dissolved oxygen. The We Know DO webpage can be, can be accessed by going to ysi.com backslash we know DO. Today I'm going to focus on, on the new optical BOD probe. So if you'd like information on how other types of DO sensors work or information on how to get the best data, including how to improve your calibration technique, how to, how to um, service your probes, please check our DO resource page where you can find two other recorded webinars on dissolved oxygen technologies, including how to take a good measurement. Just navigate to the YSI website and look for the webinar, webinars links to find these other recorded webinars. I also want to mention that this presentation focuses on the new optical BOD probe and its measurement technology. I won't be discussing the details of running a BOD test or how to troubleshoot a BOD test. For more information on the BOD test procedure, check out YSI's technical paper on ensuring accurate and successful BODs, which can be found on the We Know DO webpage. I also recommend reviewing the handbook, Laboratory Testing for BOD and CBOD, by North Central Labs. Let's review the OBOD probe. The OBOD features a quick responding temperature sensor that is located near the DO sensing element of the probe. This allows for temperature measurements to be made at the same location as the DO measurements. The probe OBOD also features a stir motor and stir paddle. 
The stir paddle helps keep samples well mixed by not allowing solids to settle in the sample. The stir also speeds up the response time of the reading. The response time of the OBOD sensor when the stir is on is T95 in 20 seconds, which means that the probe will read 95% of the final reading within 20 seconds. As most of you may have heard, optical sensors do not utilize membranes for measuring dissolved oxygen. Instead, optical sensors use a sensing element located at the tip of the probe. All optical sensors, regardless of the manufacturer, have a sensing element that will need to be replaced. It's also referred to as a substrate or a sensing foil, but in essence, the sensing element is, is um, standard through all optical probes and does need to be replaced periodically. The YSI optical probe, the optical BOD probe sensing element is embedded in a sensor cap that is user replaceable by simply screwing on and off. The cap is warranted for one year but can last up to 16 to 18 months. Now let me explain the sensor cap in a little bit more detail. Each sensor cap has two layers. The outer layer is an oxygen permeable membrane, oxygen permeable diffusion layer that allows oxygen molecules to pass through while protecting the sensing layer. The sensing layer is an immobilized luminophore dye layer that luminesces when excited with light of the proper wavelength. The degradation of the sensing layer over time is what causes the sensor cap to need replacement. All lifetime-based optical sensors require that this layer be replaced periodically. As mentioned, the YSI sensor cap will generally last 16 to 18 months. For extra protection, the OBOD sensor cap has a built-in guard. The guard protects the paint layer from chips and scratches if accidentally hit on the edge of a BOD bottle, lab counter, or other hard surface. Now I'll review how optical or luminescent technology measures dissolved oxygen. The probe measures dissolved oxygen by first emitting a blue light of the proper wavelength that causes the, the dye in the sensor cap to luminesce or glow red. Oxygen that is dissolved in the sample continually passes through the diffusion layer to the sensing element, affecting the luminescence of the dye in both intensity and lifetime. The amount of oxygen passing through to the sensing layer is inversely proportional to the lifetime of the luminescence. The sensor measures the lifetime of that luminescence with a photodiode or light detector in the probe. This is represented in the image by the red light beam. To increase the accuracy and stability of the measurement, the sensor then emits a red light that is reflected by the dye layer back to the photodiode in the sensor. The sensor measures the reflected light and uses it as a reference. The probe compares the value of the measured luminescent lifetime when oxygen is present to the reference value measured by the reflected red light and calculates the dissolved oxygen concentration. Now that, we've, now that we have reviewed how an optical sensor takes a dissolved oxygen measurement, I'd like to describe some advantages of optical sensors over traditional membrane-covered sensors. First and foremost, the optical sensor does not have a warm-up time since there aren't any electrodes to polarize. What this means to you is that you can come into your lab for the day, turn on the instrument, and immediately start taking readings. You'll no longer have to wait the 10 minutes for the probe to stabilize like you do with the membrane-covered sensor. Second, optical sensors are not affected by other gases that may be dissolved in the sample, such as hydrogen sulfide, which over time can cause membrane-covered sensors to read erratically. The next advantage is that the optical sensor has very has very low calibration drift when compared to membrane-covered electrodes. For example, optical sensors are capable of holding their calibration for several months while membrane-covered sensors need to be calibrated every day. Now even though an optical sensor can hold its calibration for several months, 
we still recommend verifying the calibration regularly to ensure data accuracy. The data you collect is only as good as the instrument's calibration, so why not take an extra minute or two before starting your samples to verify that your probe is still reading accurately. Verifying calibration is very easy to do. Just place the sensor in its calibration environment and check to see that it is reading the correct calibration value for your barometric pressure or elevation. This should take no time at all with the OBOD because the calibration environment is the same as the storage environment. As shown in this picture, place the probe in a BOD bottle with about a half an inch of clean water in it for both storage and calibration. When you start your day, turn on your instrument and check the DO percent readings to ensure the instrument is reading its calibration value. All pro ODO instruments have internal barometers that will show you your daily barometric pressure. You can use the chart in the back of the manual to look up what your calibration value should be per the barometric pressure reading of the day. Or just write down your calibration value when you perform a calibration and check the instrument to see if it is reading this value when the probe is in the storage environment. If the DO percent reading has drifted more than 1%, then I suggest you recalibrate the instrument before taking your readings. Another advantage is that the optical sensor requires less maintenance than membrane-covered electrodes. With optical sensors, the sensor cap only needs to be replaced about once per year, where the electrochemical sensor or membrane-covered sensor requires a membrane change every two to eight weeks depending on use and storage. To change the optical sensor cap, simply unscrew the cap from the sensor tip and replace it with a new one. The caps are installed dry, so there is no fill solution to replace. Additionally, with an optical sensor, there are no electrodes to sand or polish. As shown in this picture, the electrodes of a membrane-covered sensor become tarnished over time due to the chemical reaction taking place under the membrane. Therefore, membrane-covered electrodes require periodic sanding to remove this buildup. Optical sensors do not require this or any other type of, of continuous maintenance. The next advantage is that the optical sensor uses a non-consumptive method for dissolved oxygen measurement and therefore has no stirring requirement or flow dependence. The membrane covered sensor on the other hand does have a stirring requirement and if that requirement is not met the dissolved oxygen readings will be artificially low. This is more important for field measurements because the field probes do not have a stir. This is a huge advantage for lab BOD measurements since the optical and membrane covered sensors both have stirs. So you're probably asking yourself, why have a stir on the optical BOD sensor if the stir is not flow dependent? Well, there are actually a couple reasons. The primary reason is to keep the sample well mixed in order to get a better representative reading. The other the other advantage to having a stir is the stir speeds up the response time of the sensor, allowing you to take faster readings than if you did not have a stir. Here is a graph to help illustrate the stirring dependence of a membrane covered sensor. Adequate sample movement or stirring was applied to the sensor and then removed. You can see that the DO readings began falling when the stirring ceased and the result was artificially low DO readings. This graph shows the same study, only an optical sensor was used instead of a membrane-covered sensor. In this example, the DO readings remained constant when the sample movement or probe stirring was stopped because the optical sensing method is non-consumptive and therefore did not require stirring to maintain accurate readings. Now that we have reviewed the advantages of using an optical sensor over membrane-covered sensors, I'd like to review the basic performance specifications. The dissolved oxygen specifications listed here are for the system, which includes the instrument, the cable, and the probe. Some published specifications are instrument only, so be aware of this difference when you are comparing specs to, to ensure that you are comparing apples to apples. For both the optical and electrochemical sensors, the range extends from zero to 50 milligrams per liter of oxygen with a 0.01 milligram per liter resolution. 
There are a few exceptions to this. For example, you might be using the YSI Model 5000 or 5100, and both of those products have ranges that extend from 0 to 60 milligrams per liter. Or maybe you're using one of the older style uh, YSI gray box instruments, and those had a range of 0 to 20 milligrams per liter. The accuracy of both sensor types is specified within two different ranges, as you'll notice in the, in the slide. The BO, for BOD applications, the 0 to 20 milligram per liter range should be more than sufficient. Within this range, the optical sensor exhibits an accuracy of plus or minus 0.1 milligrams per liter, or 1% of the reading. And the membrane covered sensor exhibits an accuracy of 0.2 milligrams per liter, or 2% of the reading, whichever is greater. As you can see, the optical sensor is more accurate within this 0 to 20 milligram per liter range. The increased accuracy of the optical sensor should help your blank depletion headaches go away because meeting the blank depletion requirement will be easier to achieve with this increased accuracy. Here are two graphs that compare the accuracy of the two different technologies. The data for these graphs are the results of a study performed by YSI scientists. The purpose of the study was to demonstrate to Standard Methods Optical DO Technology Review Panel that the two technologies produce nearly identical results across a wide measurement range. The left graph shows dissolved oxygen measurements from a membrane covered sensor at six different DO concentrations. The graph on the right shows readings of the same samples taken with an optical sensor. Each concentration was measured by each sensor seven times. As you can see, the two technologies measure DO equivalently. In one instance, for example, at the low end of the measurement range, both technologies picked up on a slight decrease in DO. At this point, I would like to highlight some of the key features of the YSI optical BOD sensor. One key feature is that the OBOD sensor has, has a rubber over-molded grip, unlike other BOD sensors. This added grip allows you to easily handle the probe and keeps it from slipping out of your hands as you move from bottle to bottle. Another advantage is that the probe only requires one hand to operate. An operator can easily move the probe from bottle to bottle, turning the stir on and off with one hand. It can also easily be used with either the right or the left hand. Additionally, the OBOD is IP, IP65 rated, which means it is completely dustproof and splash resistant. The OBOD is also manufactured in the USA. Another feature is that the optical sensor with a, with, is that the optical sensor with a stir has the same response as the YSI 5905 and 5010 BOD sensors you may be currently using. The response time of the optical BOD with a stir is T95 and 20 seconds, which means that the probe will read 95% of its final reading within 20 seconds. This is the same response time as the current products, the 5905 and the 5010. The OBOD also carries a two-year warranty while most other BOD sensors are only warranted for one year. The temperature sensor of the OBOD probe has a measurement range of negative 5 to 50 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.2 degrees Celsius. Another feature of the YSI OBOD is the type of stir motor utilized by the sensor. We chose a direct drive motor which results in a quieter motor that rotates reliably and consistently. The probe itself is also serviceable, so if the motor or sensor needs replaced, it can be done so affordably without having to replace the entire probe. The OBOD also features a guarded sensor cap. The guard helps protect the sensor cap if it's accidentally hit on the side of a bottle or other hard surface, so the guard can really help extend the life of your sensor cap. As mentioned, the OBOD is used with a YSI Pro Odeo instrument. It can also be used to send initial and final DO readings direct to a PC with our BOD Analyst Pro software. BOD Analyst Pro can help save you time by allowing you to build batches ahead of time 
and it will also calculate your final B, your your BODs based on your setup criteria and your initial and final DO readings. BOD Analyst is compatible with Windows Vista and 7. I also want to mention that all Pro ODO instruments include a copy of our Data Manager software. Data Manager is freeware that allows you to set up instruments, run real-time studies to a PC, download saved data from the instrument, and export data to other programs. Now I would like to give you a status update of US EPA's national approval of using optical DO sensors for compliance monitoring. We are getting very close to final EPA approval. On September 23, 2010, the US EPA published national approval of ASTM standard D88-09 method C to its federal register. It is now available for comment until November 22, 2010. Once the comment period closes, we expect final approval by the EPA to happen sometime by the end of 2010 or early 2011. ASTM is an international group that develops and approves technical standards. Their standard D888-09 deals with measuring dissolved oxygen in water. And method C specifically describes the use of optical technology for measuring dissolved oxygen. YSI sensors meet the requirement for this standard. So once EPA approves this method, YSI optical sensors will be able to be used for compliance monitoring. We have also been looking forward to standard methods approving optical sensors for water and wastewater analysis. They are currently compiling all test data for evaluation. This should, this should be completed and final approval granted sometime in early 2011. We offer two versions of the OBOD probe, a USA version and an international version. The USA version will fit in any standard 300 ml BOD bottle. It will also fit in bottles used in Japan. It includes a power supply with a USA style plug to power the stir motor. The international version will fit in most international bottles like the Portuguese bottle pictured here. It includes a funnel adapter, for fitting into the bottle and into bottles commonly used in the United Kingdom. The power supply for the international version includes outlet adapters for fitting into different style power outlets. In addition to, Pro, to the BOD Analyst Pro software, we also offer a lab dock as an accessory to the Pro ODO and OBOD system. The lab dock is a great place to keep your instrument when in use or just for storage. It provides a nice angle to the instrument so the display can be easily read. You can keep the Pro Audio instrument in the dock while you take measurements and send data to the PC. It also has a BOD holder for storing and calibrating the OBOD Pro. Lastly, we will be offering the OBOD Pro packaged in kits. The kits will be available by the end of the year. The OBOD Lab Kit includes the OBOD Pro, the Pro Audio instrument, and a lab dock. The advanced OBOD lab kit includes the OBOD Pro, a Pro Audio instrument, a lab dock, and the BOD Analyst Pro software. That brings us to the end of today's presentation. I think we have time for some questions, so if you have any questions, feel free to use the texting function on the right side of your screen. If you would like to contact us directly, please email us at environmental at ysi.com or use one of the numbers on your screen. Patrick, do we have any questions for today? Yes, thanks, Laura. Um, we do have several questions. There are a couple questions that are a bit more specific that we will follow up directly with the um, folks that are asking those. But I do have some that are um, probably we can be answered here quickly in the next couple minutes. Uh, one of the first ones, Laura, is will the OBOD work with a scalar or other automated type analyzer systems? Um, that's a good question. We've actually been working with uh, Scalar and Mantech, which used to be Mandel, so it's a little confusing and it's part of Labtronics, but we've been working with those companies um, actively um, so they can uh, retrofit our new OBOD sensor into their existing 
um, automated VOD uh, samplers. So it's it's not currently a plug and play, but we're actively working on it, and it, and it should be just another few months. Okay, thank you. Um, another question that's come in is, can data be sent to a LIM system or otherwise exported somehow uh, into a LIM system? Um, yes, if you want, if, if the goal is to get the data from the instrument uh, into your LIM system as kind of a, a data warehouse or a database holding place, yes, you can. All you need to do is get the data into either our freeware data manager program or into BOD Analyst Pro and it's a simple export and then from there you can export the data into a file um, that will be accepted by LIMS systems. Okay, we have a couple questions that uh, are kind of around the sensing cap so I'm going to ask you both of them, Laura, because I think you're going to answer them both as part of the same. I'll just ask you both questions. The first question is does the cap expire after 12 months or will it still work? And then a follow-up question to that from another attendee is, what type of indication would you get that would require you to change the cap or kind of indicate that it might need replaced? Uh, both good questions. Um, first, the cap does not expire. Um, that's why they're lasting, you know, 16 to eight, 18 months. Um, this is an, the OVOD probe is new, but we've been using the same type of cap on on the ODO um, field probe for almost two years now, and we are seeing them last 16 to 18 months. But nothing expires. No message comes up on the instrument saying, "Oh, you've been using this cap for a year. You have to replace it before you can take any more measurements." That does not happen. Um, so as long as it continues performing properly, you can continue to use it, and and performance would be your indication for when when to replace it. So if your readings were jumpy, erratic, if you were getting error messages during calibration and could not perform a calibration, the first thing we would do would be to investigate the cap and see if the cap needs replaced. And Laura, we have folks from all over the world in attendance today, and there are a couple pricing questions. So I uh, was hoping maybe you could address pricing and also potentially tell how it compares to an electrochemical system. Um, sure. Pricing um, can be obtained from your local YSI distributor. Um, so all of our distributors have pricing for the product. Um, so contact your local distributor um, for for that information. If you're unsure on who your local distributor is, all of that is listed on our website. If you go to YSI.com, on the left side uh, under Contact Us, find a distributor. Um, and once you locate a distributor that's near you, they'll be able to provide you pricing. Um, as far as as how it compares to like the 5905 and 5010, it's very comparable. Um, just a, just a little bit more in price, but for that additional cost, you're getting an extra year warranty um, and 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 less maintenance um, required sensor. Okay, and I think we have time for one more that it's been has been asked by a couple attendees. Can you just please review again? what instrument the probe will work with. Uh, we have a couple folks that are interested to know uh, if there's an adapter or any way it would work with the 5100. The OBOD probe will only work with a YSI uh, Pro ODO instrument. It will not work with the 5000 or 5100. And the reason is, is because the OBOD is a digital probe. Um, all of the measurements and DO uh, concentration calculation is done actually in the probe and then that reading is just sent to the instrument digitally where like the 5000 and the 5100 are analog instruments so those the probes that work with those instruments are just sending an analog signal back and then the instrument itself is processing the signal and coming up with a DO value. So that's the reason is, is just different technology, digital versus analog. 
All right. Thanks, Laura. I love putting you on the spot there with some of those questions. Uh, we appreciate everybody's attendance. Uh, once again, just to wrap up, we have recorded the webinar. You will receive a link to the recording uh, probably sometime tomorrow. We appreciate everyone's attendance, and we'll follow up with anyone we did not get to answer their questions. Thank you very much.